Hey everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad you came out for our very own Berwick Firefighters story time. <laughs> We've got stories. And what do they, what's, what, do, what do you like them to call you? Uh, so as the kids know me, most of them know me as Firefighter Travis. As I am the fire prevention guy for the school. And do a lot of the teaching in the school. So as you guys go to the Huzzy School this fall, I think most some of you look like you'll be going to kindergarten or first grade. You'll see me at the school either in video if they don't allow me in the school or in your classroom to do some fire prevention discussions with you. Uh, some of you have already might have seen me at your preschools because I go to all your preschools too. Um, so you can call me Fireman Travis. And then we also have Fireman Josiah over here and uh, Fireman Roger over there as well. Today we are going to start off with reading you a book. I decided to pick from my own library and do um, No Dragons for Tea. Okay, so we'll read this book and then once we get done reading it, we'll talk about a couple fire prevention things. Um, Firefighter Josiah will put on everything that we wear when we go inside of a house that's on fire so that you can see what we look like. Um, and then we will go and walk around the fire truck. Unfortunately, I can't let you in the fire truck because of all the wonderful COVID stuff going on, but we can walk around it and take a look at the fire truck and see what we have for equipment in the fire truck. Okay? You guys ready to go? Yeah. You ready to read my story? So no dragons for tea. On a warm summer day at the end of last week, my mom and I went for a walk to the creek. As I raced down the hill in my little red wagon, I veered to the left and smacked into a dragon. I suppose he could see there was fear in my eyes as I jumped to my feet quite filled with surprise. He sheepishly grinned and stepped out of the way but he seemed so polite that I asked him to play. You guys want to play with a dragon? No. No? I don't know if I'd want to play with a dragon either. He had a cute bear and some other toys too. With my shovel and pail, we'd have oodles to do. We ran to the creek and then onto the bay. We would play where we played on the beach for the rest of the day. <laughs> then mom waved and said, now it's time to go eat. Let's pack the red wagon and head up the street. It's hard to stop playing with friends old or new. So I asked if the dragon could come to eat too. My mom wrinkled her brow and squinted her eyes, looking up at the dragon's incredible size. I begged and I pleaded, then I then said, very sweet, we won't make a mess, we'll be tidy and neat. So at last she said, yes, just this once I'll agree, you may have the dragon come over for tea. Well, now I get now I got to be really loud. <laughs> we had carrots and apples, thick slices of ham, with fresh homemade biscuits and strawberry jam. Cold glasses of milk and great big dill pickle, but the pepper we sprinkled sure made my nose tickle. Then the dragon's nose twitched, and he started to wheeze. His eyes missed up and he blew a great sneeze. What do we think happens when a dragon sneezes? Does anybody know what happens when a dragon sneezes? Fire! Ah, ah, a chew! Well, we all know what happens when dragons a chew. Flames shoot from his mouth and from both nostrils too. Uh-oh. He'd fire blow out of his nose and his mouth. You guys have fire blow out of your nose and mouth? No? That's a good thing. Our tablecloth sparked 
and then burst into flames, and the curtains that hung right beside did the same. That smoke alarms rang, what a loud piercing sound. It meant get out fast, so I dropped to the ground. You see the house started to catch fire? She's getting ready to get down on the ground. The room filled with smoke as I crawled on the floor and started to make my way to the front door. The dragon got scared and decided to hide, but I knew when there's fire we must get outside. I grabbed his thick tail and with one mighty tug, I pulled that big dragon from under the rug. See the dragon hiding? Are we supposed to hide if there's something on fire? No, no right? No. Okay, we want to get outside like she said, right? Get outside as quickly as you can. I crept down the hallway and said, follow me. I knew the way out. We must meet by the tree. So mom and the dragon and I all met there. Then that silly old dragon went back for his bear. So he went out to his meeting place, right? Yeah. Do you guys all have a meeting place? Do you guys all have a place to go if your smoke alarms go off? Yeah, yeah it's very important that you have that at home. Okay? But once you get out there, do you go back in? No, you want to stay out, right? So should the dragon go back in to get his teddy bear? Yeah. Who's going to get his teddy bear for him? We will, okay? We'll try and get his teddy bear for him. We ran up and caught him and wouldn't let go. And I said, listen, dragon, here's what you should know. Don't ever go back. That's just will not do. We can get a new bear, but we can't replace you. Since the fire was burning inside of our home, we went to the neighbors to borrow the phone. Mom knew what to dial and said calm and clear. Here's our full street address. Send the fire trucks here. Before very long, down our street they came sailing with bright red lights flashing and loud sirens wailing. The fire crew rushed to start work on their task. They were dressed in big boots and wore helmets and masks. They hooked up the hose and ran into the house where they sprayed streams of water in order to douse. The table, the curtains, our lovely snack too. And it didn't take long till the fire was through. The fire chief called out the door with a shout. The smoke made a mess, but the fire is out. My poor friend the dragon knew he was to blame, so he hung down his head and wept with great tears of shame. One of the fire crew said, don't be sad. You knew what to do, and of that we're quite glad. You all got out safely, that's what really matters. Then we, shook, then we took us to see the big pump truck and ladders. The dragon put on a shiny red hat and asked to see where the fire crew sat. She showed us the siren, the hose and lights, and the ladders they climbed up to reach higher heights. The rest of the crew checked all the rooms while, the fan with a, while a fan in the door blew out gray smoke and fumes. Then the dragon and I, we sat down for a while. I reached up and hugged him. He gave a great smile. <clears throat> the next time the dragon and I want to play, we'll pack a, up a picnic and go to the bay. We are friends, tried and true, the best we can be, but I'll never again invite dragons for tea. She should probably keep the dragon outside, you think? 
You think that's a good idea to keep the dragon outside? Yeah. All right. That's the end of the story. That's a great story. I'm so glad you found it. So, what we'll do now is a couple of things that they talked about in the book was a meeting place. Okay. Uh, uh, you will hear me say over and over and over again the importance of having a meeting place at home. Okay. So if your smoke detectors go off in your house, you're supposed to go outside every single time, even if it's because mom and dad are horrible cooks, right? Okay, you should still go outside because you never know what the actual problem is. And let mom and dad tell you it's okay, you can come back inside. But as kids, as soon as you hear that smoke detector to go beep, 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 you want to stop what you're doing and get out of the house as quickly as you possibly can. When you get outside, you need to know where to go. And that's why it's important to have a meet in place so that you, everybody in your family goes to the same spot so that you know that you are all safe and out of the house. Okay? What number do we call if we have an emergency? 911, right. Okay, and that's for emergencies only. Okay, an emergency is if your house is on fire, if mom and dad are really, really sick, or if you're really sick and you need to go to the hospital, okay, or if you have somebody at your house that's trying to get in and you don't know who they are, those are emergencies, okay? Who wants to see what Firefighter Josiah looks like? Okay, does he look scary? You guys see Fireman Josiah over here? Does he look scary? Does he look goofy looking? You can all say yes, because he's very goofy looking, okay? <laughs> Fireman Josiah is going to put on everything that we wear when we go inside of a house that's on fire. Bring it right over here, yeah. Okay? So, do you guys like to go outside and play in the snow in the winter time? Yeah. What do you got to put on when you go outside to play in the snow in the winter time? You got to put on a jacket, you got to put on gloves, what else? A hat, some boots, okay? So if you look at all of this stuff that Fireman Josiah is going to put on, it's all kind of like the same stuff you have to wear to go outside and play in the snow, okay? Except for this stuff will protect us from the heat and from the fire, okay? Your stuff will not protect you from heat or fire. Your stuff will help you stay warm when it's cold out, right? Okay? So he's going to put on his boots and his pants. You guys keep your snow pants like that, set up just like that? I'm going to tell you right now, mom and dad would be really happy if you did that because it would be a lot quicker for you to put your stuff on when it's time to go outside and play in the snow. I know your teachers would really enjoy it. They won't? No? Okay. All right. Now, you want to put on your hat. So now he's going to put on a hat. Okay? You guys have a hat like this that you wear? Okay. But his hat's going to hide for a minute. He's going to put it on and then he's going to make it disappear. Okay? Because now what do you think he's going to put on? Jacket. He's got to put on his jacket. Right. Good job. Um, yeah, this is the benefit of not being the low man on the totem poles. You don't have to put all the stuff on. <laughs> so when Fireman Josiah is all done, he has everything on that he's supposed to have on, we shouldn't be able to touch any of his skin, okay? Remember that because I'm going to quiz you later. Does he look scary looking? No. Does he look goofy looking? Yeah, he looks very goofy looking, right? Okay. Now, he is going to put on what we call our backpack. Okay. You guys bring a backpack to school? Yeah. And inside that backpack, you bring me what? Snacks. Yeah, somebody remembers. <laughs> you bring me my snacks, right? So, but in, do you think there's snacks in Josiah's backpack? No. no what's inside Josiah's backpack? Air. Air, right? He's got air inside of his backpack. Okay, that's our SCBA packs, okay? So he's gonna go ahead and put that on. Then we'll make some noises and I'll help you make the noises. All right, so now he's got his backpack on. He's ready to go, right? Okay, but he's gonna, he's gonna, we're gonna turn it on first, okay? So I want you guys all to make a noise, ready? Everybody go, it's going to be hard to do. Everybody go. Okay, good, perfect. Okay, and now go. Beep, beep. 
Okay, that's the sound you're gonna hear in just a second, okay? Okay, that tells us that the, it's ready to go. Okay, it's got air down here, ready for me to breathe in, and the beeping is an alarm so that if he doesn't move for 30 seconds, it'll start beeping and it tells us that one of our firefighters is hurt. And we need to go, it helps us go to go find him, okay? Um, now, let's put this on. See, it's gonna start going off because he stopped moving. Once he starts moving, so when you ever see us on the side of the road and we're always dancing like this, it's not because we like to dance, it's because we hate hearing the thing beep. So we have to always keep our butts wiggling back and forth. So now he's got a mask on, okay? Is he, is he scary looking? No. Is he goofy looking? No. <laughs> Very much so, right? Okay, everybody put your hands in front of your face and say, hi, Josiah. Hi, Josiah. Okay, that's what it's gonna sound like in a minute when he goes to try and talk to you guys, okay? But before he can go any further, what, is he gonna, what else does he have to put on? What's he missing? Gloves. His gloves, what else? What else is he missing right here? What'd you say? His hat, right? He's missing his hat, okay? So he's got to put his hat on his head. Okay? Oh, he's got to put his hood on first. I forgot about the hood. I told you it was going to disappear. I forgot about the hood. He's got to put the hood back on first. Now he's got to put his hat on. Okay? You guys wear helmets when you ride your bicycles? Yeah. Yeah, you should because that there to protect your head. Okay, this is the same thing. This is a helmet to protect our hoods, our heads, just like we were out riding a bicycle, okay? So that if something falls and hits us in the head, it doesn't hurt. Okay. All right, what else does he need? Gloves, gloves right? He's got to put his gloves on. Okay. Now, can we see any of his skin? No. Can we touch any of his skin? No. Okay, we can see his face skin, right? But we can't touch it, right? Okay. I can't get to it, right? Okay. So, is he scary looking? No. No, is he goofy looking? No. Yeah. Yeah. He's very, come on, you got to at least join in. He's really goofy looking. Okay, all right, so now he's gonna go on and start breathing and so you can hear him breathe, okay? All right, go ahead and talk. Hello, everyone. You hear him? Okay, so Josiah, when he talks inside that thing, he has to be really, really loud, okay? So when we're inside of a house that's on fire, we are constantly yelling at each other because we wanna be able to hear what's going on. So if you are stuck in your house and you can't get outside, do I want you to hide like the dragon did under the carpet? No, okay. I want you to sit on the floor next to a door or next to a window. That'll be the fastest way that we will be able to come and find you, okay? And if you're in there, I want you to be the loudest you have ever been. This is the one time I will give you permission to scream as loud as you can okay, inside the house because the louder you are, the easier it's going to be for us to come and find you, okay? All right. You guys all say hi to Josiah. Should we make him suffer in this for a little while longer? No, we should let him take it off? Yeah. All right, all right, you can go ahead and take it off. Do <laughs> you guys have any questions for me right now before we wait for him to take all that stuff off? Yeah. A question, something that you wanna know? <laughs> you thinking? Okay, while you're thinking, we'll let him go. Go ahead, what's your question? This thing? Yeah. Exactly what you said it is. It's a flashlight. No, it's and it's dead. Doesn't do him any well. Okay? But it's it's a flashlight so that we can see inside of the dark spaces. Okay? He's got he has another one up here. Is that your camera? No, it's camera. Oh, never mind, he's got a camera up there. <laughs> Question? Wait. What is that? This or this? 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 That's just a mask. It's our SCBA mask. It's just a mask. Kind of like if we were going to go diving in the water. Except for that's not going to help us dive in the water. Are you ready now? Okay, hold on. Uh, he probably does have all kinds of tools in his pockets. We like to hide stuff in our pockets so that we can get uh, help us get out of areas. Okay, we've got like uh, things to cut wire. We got knives. We got some, usually some stuff to open up hydrants. I don't know if you do, but some of us do. You have a question? How, how much is the flashlight? 
How much is it? <laughs> How much does it weigh? Everything. So everything that he just put on is about 75 to 100 pounds. Okay, that we have to wear above and beyond our body weight. So our tanks are what they consider 30 minute bottles. However, you have to be extremely well fit and be able to control your breathing to hit the 30 minutes. Most of us are 15 minutes. Most of us go into a build, which in reality, with the amount of work that we need to do, we don't want to be in there longer than 15 minutes anyways. Um, so, it's, but 15 minutes and then we can actually on a fire, we go through two bottles and then we have to go break. So. Some, of, some departments have 45 minute bottles and hour, hour bottles, but those are like if we had a RIT pack, uh, which is a RIT is a team that shows up on scene that is specifically set aside to come in and save us if something happens, their bottles are 45 minutes or an hour because they will give us their air from that bottle into our bottles. Any other questions? You do? That's good. Right back here. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. How old do you have to be? So we start having firefighters join our department at 16 years old. So when you turn 16, you can become a junior firefighter. And then at 18, you can go to, well, actually, while you're in school now at high school, you can go through the class and become certified. And then once you turn 18, you can actually be a firefighter for us. So, All right, we ready to go look around the fire truck now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, the best we can. Can't let you in the fire trucks today. You can look in with your eyes. And this is where we all sit. And if you look in the seats, uh, probably the front one would be the best one. You'll see the air packs that we wear so that we can sit in the seat and on the way to the, on the way to the fire, we can put it on. So we're ready to go when we get off the truck. Okay. You guys know what this area is? What do you think comes out of here? Water, right? So if I take this, this is our nozzle with our hair, our hose, right? And if I open this, what do you think is going to happen? You ready? Ah. The truck's got to be on first, goofballs. <laughs> the truck's not on, so there's no water that's going to come out of it. Okay, but this is one of our hand lines. These are two of the other hand lines that we wear. You guys can keep, keep right over if you want, and we'll use to put the fire out, okay? Over here, you remember when the book, um, she said that they used the fan to get all the smoke and all the fumes out of the house. Okay, look, this is what we got right here. It's one of our fans, okay, to be able to put into a house to blow all the bad stuff out of your house if we needed to. You know, when mom and dad are horrible cooks and they set off the smoke detector, we'll use this to get the smoke out of their house for them. Okay, we also have stuff in here. These are what we have suits that we would wear if we needed to go into the water to rescue you if you fell through the ice or uh, if you were having a hard time swimming and we needed to go in and rescue you out of the water, we have our suits and our life jackets. Uh, we have some ropes if we had to pick you up a hill. If you fell down a, a hill and we needed to pick you up the hill. This part here is kind of our salvage and overhaul section. This is where we put our water pumps if you get if your basement gets flooded. And we need to suck the water out of your basement. We can. Use our pumps here. These stuff is? Saws. Nope, not saws. Nope, it's cutters, right? So if you get into a really, really bad car accident and we, you can't get out of your car, we have to come and help you get out of the car, we will use these to cut your car open or to pry your car open, okay? We have all kinds of stuff to be able to get you out of that car if we had to, if there was something really bad going on and we needed to get you out. To the other side, Okay, just take a look at these compartments. You'll see our ladders and stuff that we use for the hydrant to make sure we can get water from the hydrants.
You guys know what this is? You guys have this at your house? No. Yeah. Hold on, let me show you a little bit more of it so you can know what it actually is. You guys have this at your house? Yeah? yeah? Mommy and Daddy use it to cut down trees, right? Okay. Do you think we use this to cut down trees? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we got to cut trees down, especially to go in the road. Okay, but we also use it to cut your holes in your roofs. Okay? If you had a fire in your house and we needed to get the bad gases and stuff out of your house to help us, we'll cut a hole in your roof so that it'll go up and go out of your roof. Okay? Or we can use it to open up doors and stuff like that. Yes, go ahead. Would we get a cat out of a tree? So, that is a great question. So, we try. If I can reach the tree, I might try. But, one of the most important things to know is that cats won't stay in the tree. They might stay up there for a long period of time, but eventually they'll get hungry and they'll come down. There we go. They have a, if they got up, they will figure out how to get back down. Okay? We and a lot of times they just jump. But we can, we have in the past tried. <laughs> All right, over here you can see some more lights and some more air packs. This one here, you've got your fire extinguishers. Okay, do I have to use all the water that's in here sometimes? No, sometimes it's a little tiny fire and I can use this instead. Would mom and dad rather me use a fire extinguisher than the thousand gallons of water on the truck? <laughs> yeah, because that's not going to cause as much damage as all that water, okay? This is where we control the water. So behind these compartments, there's a tank that's got 1,200 gallons of water in it. Somehow we got to tell that water to come out and go through our hose so that we can put it on the fire, okay? And then you've got hydrants. It was not one right here. There's hydrants on the side of the road that we will put this hose to so that we can get water from the water system to give us more water so that I don't ever run out of water, okay? But if I pull these levers, so if I pull this one right here, uh, we'll go with this one. If I go with this one right here and I pull it, and I open up this, what do you think is going to happen? Water is going to come out, right? Because I'm telling the water that I want it to go from the tank, through the pump, into the hose, and out the hose onto you. You, are, you ready to get wet? You want to get wet? No? No? <laughs> it's hot enough, I'm thinking I might want to get wet. Though I'm not sure I really want to get wet with the water that's been sitting in our tanks for who knows how long. <laughs> All right. You guys have any questions on our stuff that you just saw? Once I was like daddy in the car. I was once on like daddy in the car and then we saw a fire extinguisher. Or, um, hydrant. Hydrant. Yeah. With um, water coming out because I think it was being tested. Yep. Yep. They do that all the time. They have to flush the hydrants because if they don't, then the rocks get into them and then when we go tap into them, the rocks get into here and that's really bad. It's really bad if rocks get into our pump. Okay. All right. You guys want to come over here? I can give you guys some helmets. Would you like a helmet? You're welcome. Thank you. Would you guys like helmets? Yeah. Can I have one for my sister? For your sister? Yes, I can bring one. Absolutely. I'll let you have one bringing for your sister. Good job. Would you like a helmet, Aaron? Huh? Yes, it is for you. You like a new helmet? Maybe. Here we go. Oh, I see. We got a cool fireman. I got a cool fireman. Right? <laughs> Fire hats. We got to wear forward. All right. Yeah. He's like, I don't want that anymore. KP, look at your Okay, look. All right. All right. Come on. How does it work? How does it make the siren noise? Or, oh. So we got we got, we can turn it on and start it like a regular vehicle. And when we are done, when you guys all go stand over there, we'll turn the lights on and make the siren as we leave. Okay. Watch out for Finn. So Finn can All right. All right. Can you put your mask on? There we go. Can you go with Cassie for a picture? You want one with just you? Okay. Yeah, I have, well, I've got kids, so I've been just doing it for a while. <laughs> doing, it, doing the fire veggie with kids for years. Have a good day. You too.
I hope you can enjoy some of the sun.